the growth of the energy processing industry which has led to a tremendous amount of research being done in the area of gas liquid to phase flow. Gas liquid flow is a fairly common phenomenon. You can see it in everyday life all around you. What you don't normally see in everyday life is that gas liquid flow is also being used extensively in industry. You don't see it because it's inside pipelines and heat exchanges which are all part of today's energy production industry. It's the advent of this high technology that has created a need for the detailed study of gas liquid flow. Atomic Energy Research Establishment is at the forefront of this kind of research. Here we shall begin a systematic study of gas liquid flow in the vertical direction. What is it that makes gas liquid two-phase flow different from the separate flow of one or other of the phases? It's the surface or interface separating the phases. Sometimes the interface is wavy, sometimes it's spherical. On other occasions it can be a complex mixture of waves, bubbles, plugs and slugs. Let us now collect and classify information of the flow patterns made by the gas and liquid flow in the tube. For this kind of flow pattern, we have set the air at a low flow rate and the water at a relatively high flow rate. We can represent the flow rates on a graph by plotting the liquid superficial velocity against the gas superficial velocity. For this experiment, we have set superficial velocities of 3 meters per second for the gas phase and 5 meters per second for the liquid phase. Obviously, we can describe our flow as bubbly. So let's plot a point and mark it bubbly. Now we shall reduce the liquid flow rate while maintaining the gas rate constant. Observe the large bullet shaped bubbles interspersed with liquid containing lots of smaller bubbles. These intermittent large scale bubbles have given the name slug flow to this flow pattern. 
Let's plot another point and mark it slug. Again, reducing the liquid velocity, the flow pattern becomes all churned up. We add a third point to our graph and call it churn flow. A characteristic of churn flow is the intermittent upwards and downwards motion of the liquid phase. It looks quite different if we look down the tube. The next point on our graph is one we call annular flow. The liquid flow has been kept constant while the gas flow has been increased considerably. In annular flow, we have a wavy film on the wall of the tube and gas containing entrained droplets flowing in the center. The structure of the flow is very spectacular if we look along the axis of the tube. See how the droplets are formed when filaments of liquid burst from the liquid film. We achieve the final flow pattern by raising the liquid flow rate. It is called wispy annular. The main difference between this and annular flow is the presence of large, fast-moving wisps of liquid in the center of the tube. If we do many experiments at different flow rates, each time identifying the flow pattern, we can build up a picture such as this. By looking at the points, it appears as if we have zones around which we can draw boundaries. This chart, which contains areas identified as specific flow patterns, is called a flow pattern map, and is very useful because we can calculate, for given flow rates, what kind of flow pattern we would expect to obtain. The flow pattern map tells us what happens in vertical gas-liquid flow at certain superficial velocities, Vg, and we add. Why is it that we have different and distinct flow patterns? The answer seems to be that we have competing forces or mechanisms occurring within the fluid at the same time. The balance between these forces determines which flow pattern we shall see in the tube. For example, let's consider the transition from bubbly to slug flow. In bubble flow, the bubbles move from side to side. These bubbles injected at a point source tend to move apart and eventually take random paths. Small bubbles like these can only be produced by injecting the gas through an orifice or by allowing a film or jet of liquid to fall into a pool. In slug flow, 
the bubbles are being formed by the downwards flow of the liquid film falling into the upwards moving liquid. At the same time, the randomly moving bubbles are colliding and being sucked into the tail of the large slug. It's clear that the transition from bubble to slug flow is a manifestation of the competition going on between the formation of bubbles caused by the falling film and the coalescence of bubbles in the tail of the slug itself. At this transition point from bubble to slug flow, the volume fraction of the gas is about 30%. The transition from slug to churn flow is related to a phenomenon known to engineers by the term the onset of flooding. Flooding can occur in industrial equipment such as distillation columns, reflux condensers, and packed absorption towers. It also occurs in vertical gas liquid flow. We can do flooding experiments in this special tube. Water is injected through a sintered wall in the middle and air is blown up the tube from the bottom. This optical bench is specially designed so that we can send a laser beam through this mirror and up the tube. The laser beam comes from the top of the tube through a prism so that we can see the flow pattern in silhouette. So now let's do some flooding experiments. Water is flowing down the tube as a wavy film. Now we start to blow air up the tube in the opposite direction to the falling water. As we increase the air flow rate, the liquid film begins to get very wavy and breaks up. This is the onset of flooding. See how broken up the flow is when it is flooded. Sometimes the whole tube is blocked with liquid. Some of the liquid is flowing up the tube and some is falling down. In our slug flow, around each gas slug is a falling liquid film like we saw in the flooding experiment. If we increase the gas flow, the liquid film surrounding the slugs is flooded and we obtain churn flow with intermittent upwards and downwards motion. So we have seen that the transition from slug to churn flow is related to the onset of flooding. The transition from churn to annular flow can also be investigated in our flooding tube. This time we'll do some flow reversal experiments. At very high gas rates, all the water is carried up our flooding tube. The flow is vertical annular flow.